and move to adjust, adopt as presented. Okay. Speak up a little bit, please. We're adopting the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent calendar, draft minutes, regular meeting to approve. Um, and the bills paid. I would like to ask for a um, change um, in the section of the unit other business. Uh, Perry commented she's afraid of slander. I'd like to say that um, I commented that it is slander. And um, what are you yeah. referring to there? Um, the letter from uh, Mr. Brown. So that would be libel. Libel. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is a libel. Mm -hmm. And then um, the last sentence, I think, it should read uh, subject matter boundaries for board meetings, not the end board meetings. So we tried all sorts of things, um, but basically the only thing we could do was continue to add clarifier, chlorine, yeah, so we had subsidized quite a bit. We're looking at solutions for the upcoming season. Um, one of those things was what we should have in place, um, which is the ozone. So we're going to look into what our options are as far as having somebody else come and install the ozone for next season. Thank you. Okay, we're doing bills too, right? Or, um, um, 1582 San Francisco Chronicle annual subscription $694. Okay. How many of the subscri subscriptions do we have? It's just the yearly. That's what it is. Seriously? Yeah. For one subscription? Yeah. Do we need it? Well, I mean, no, that's fine, but that just seems ridiculously high. I guess if you divide it by 365 days a year, it's. What do you guys do with the Sunday paper? Oh, it's for the fire department. I'm sorry. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Boy, okay. That's a wake-up call. It's ninety-nine dollars every six months when you join. Then they've got you. Is that the idea? Six hundred ninety-four dollars. It sounds like a registration. So what I would suggest, and this is what I do with all of my bills once a year, is whenever they, whenever you get out of the introductory period, you call and you ask the retention department, and you say, "I'm going to cancel my subscription." I can have Tom do that. Yeah, I mean it's a five minute like phone call, and I guarantee you every time they'll give well, you whatever. Well, it's prepaid now for the next year, but I'll yeah. talk to Tom. Um, fifteen thirty nine, San Rafael overtime bill. Do we have offsetting revenue? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how much? The offsetting revenue um, that came in was for just a couple days um, for Caesar, and it was I think twenty four hundred. But I don't know if there's any more money coming in. That would be a question for Tom. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make a comment about um, the bills paid. If anybody, whether board or public, actually have comments or questions about bills paid, it's very helpful to actually ask Carolyn before the board meeting because she can then uh, access the system that has all the answers and it's much easier for her to uh, provide detail rather than asking in the meeting where she doesn't have the resources available at hand. 
I had a question. One was for Tom, the, um, the huge increase from one pay period to the other on the overtime. And then the permit for the kitchen, it was only 1,063. Is that, are we expecting to pay more for that? I'm not expecting to, no. Okay, that's all that we're getting charged for that? Mm -hmm. about bills paid. I happen to be looking and notice that um, 1563 is sold at Solid Solar Holding 1531. And 1579 is PG Electric $1816. So I was wondering why our electric bill is so much higher. I mean I would have we would have not expected our electric bill to be higher than our solar solar bill. Which was the number on the PG&E? I'm sorry. Which was the number on the PG&E? Uh, one. Five, five, one five seven, seven, seven nine. 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 One five seven nine. Well, solar affects two meters. We have about fifteen different meters for our district. They go all around the whole area, to irrigation boxes, to tennis lights, to the shed, to everything else. Um, with that said, it's still significantly lower than it was last year. The PG&E electric is significantly lower? Yeah, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I do. Okay. Um, PG&E plus SOLED was $3,348.75 this year, so that's our entire cost for um, generating electricity. Last year at the same month, it was 5548 Oh. Okay, so that's like what, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars difference? Sixteen hundred and fifty six dollars and seventy three cents. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Do you have it just for one month? Um, I've got others, but not in front of me. Okay, but in any case, it is uh, something that is progressing like similarly. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Stephen? Okay, so uh, back up to draft minutes. Um, First of all, uh, public comment uh, on the Millers. Uh, I think Carolyn has kind of taken spin on that. Uh, I said every effort should be to mediate the dispute. Okay, so um, I, I want that word mediate. I don't think that, um, and to avoid going to court. Um, the other thing was in the district matters when, when I made the comment on uh, CSA 19 um, that uh, is the fire district, uh, the, the, that's uh, Las Galinas, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but anyhow it's, it's it's a contracted area that, that San Rafael covers, uh, and that uh, includes quite a, a large geography. They pay $1.7 million for their services, and if we could somehow convince San Rafael to take over our fire department, put their name on it, keep our guys, um, get them a better pay package, etc. Uh, and if we could get the same deal, we could save a million dollars. So I would like that figure, a million dollars, because that's what I said. It's very significant, and I hope that uh, the public pays attention to that. Anything else? Do you have hand up? Not yet. Okay. Um, no, thanks. Well, for open comments, I do, but nothing. Okay, we're going to get there away. Yeah. Public comment, open time. Why do you need, you need a motion motion? Oh. Oh, because we have to approve, don't we? A motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's for the draft minutes. And the bills are paid. Okay, so the changes will be made. I'm just 
want to verify. Public comment, open time for items and I don't need to. Yeah, I, um, I would like to ask the board, and this is just a simple yes or no answer. I wasn't going to have any public comments, but something kind of jumped out at me. Did all of you guys happen to look at Irving Schwartz's um, memo about his thoughts on the kitchen remodel? Yes? Mr. Nail? Yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mr. Shea? This was uh, a month and a half ago. I think. No, this is no. in the back. 12 days ago. No, I haven't seen it. You have not seen it? Have you, did you read it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe that the memo that he sent out is a Brown Act violation. And I don't look for Brown Act violations. Honest to goodness, I don't. But this kind of jumped out while I've been accused of doing so. This kind of jumped out at me because here we have a, a director, a board director, emailing the other four board directors. I did not receive this. That's yeah, not true. No. Yeah. Well, we it's part okay. of the package. That's how. That's the first time I saw it. Okay. Well, yeah. even if you saw it just from the package, but it does say to the Marinewood CSD board of directors. So, mm -hmm. how do I know? Right? How do I know? I have no idea. Yeah. But it says to the board of directors. And normally, when someone says said something to the board of directors, uh, our district manager passes the email on to the board of directors. It doesn't really matter. If you all read it before the meeting, before the discussion, before the agenda item, it is a Brown Act violation. I'm not sure I agree with no, that. It's not. What, excuse me, it's open time, and I prefer not to be interrupted yet. Thank you. This is a serial hub meeting where one person is emailing information to the other four directors on the board before the board meeting, before the agenda item, before the discussion. And it is defined in the Brown Act as a serial hub meeting. You don't have to respond to Mr. Schwartz. He just has to give you his opinions, his ideas, his blah, blah, blah before the meeting, before the discussion. That's all I want to say. Okay. Anybody else? No. I, I don't agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, actually, this could have been, well, I'll, I'll just say it again. Um, the, uh, tonight we're going to get a report, um, and I mentioned this last month, I'll mention it again. I don't think we have good reporting for cash sales and expenditures. We're going to get a summary report tonight, but it lacks specificity uh, as far as events, and I'll get further into that at a later time. But uh, I certainly want us to be strong fiscally, and uh, by knowing where our costs are, uh, we can address them and uh, also expand revenues where appropriate. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. District matters, fiscal year 2017-18. First quarter, profit and loss budget to actual variance report review. Okay, I tried to give you a uh, somewhat uh, detailed intro memo as well as a detailed uh, a variant summary uh, to some degree. I mean, at the uh, end of the day, it's tracking right about where we would expect it to track. If anything, I'd say the rec department revenue is probably running a little bit stronger than we would, than I would have necessarily expected it to. Uh, the cost drivers are what you expect them to be. Staff wages, benefits, uh, uh, a lot of our advanced annual payments, such as uh, various insurances that get paid in full at the beginning of the year. Uh, and then our advanced pension payments. Uh, can, for Q2, beyond continued rec, um, I definitely anticipate about approximately 55% of the property taxes to be, general property taxes to be recognized. Uh, we were in a good cash position as of today. We were at 490000 
wasn't in a cash position, uh, which is a good place to be considering where we have been. Uh, uh, but again, you know, and I purposely kind of wrote this sentence in here that, that you know, that simply is a cash position. This is simply a P&L statement for three months. This doesn't represent uh, big picture items uh, uh, such as uh, the unfunded accrued liabilities, large capital expenditures that are looming uh, that we've identified over the next several years, uh, being able to actually establish a separate reserve fund held in an investment account that this district has never had. Um, all of those things would be ideal to achieve. Uh, I would say on that level, uh, there was a very good um, presentation that Director Naylor put together for the last ESS committee meeting that kind of laid out a lot of the unfunded liabilities and showed the cash outlays that are going to grow over the next five, six years. Uh, so for now, we're doing what we're supposed to do, but for the big picture, uh, it's certainly not a time to rest on your laurels and say, hey, everything's great. Um, and then uh, ideally, obviously, we'll take some questions. One thing I would like to get some level of direction on it. I don't think it by any stretch needs a motion because it is a budgeted item. Uh, you'll notice we did deposit 15000 into the OPEB trust fund uh, as planned, and it was discussed to hold after Q1, look at the Q1 financials. This is back in July. Uh, see how we're doing and decide how we want to move forward. I would certainly recommend continuing on that pace. Uh, making a uh, $10,000 deposit this month to represent October and November, make the regular December deposit, primarily based on our cash position. Mm -hmm. No argument okay. there. Yeah. Uh, any questions, I think, is probably the easiest way to go. And again, I don't know if you looked a lot, but some of the questions might be answered in the summary notes on the final page to kind of uh, try to explain any extremely large variances, basically items that or outside of a 25% range. Mm -hmm. um, um, I do have a question about um, under revenue, the expense reimbursement line item, and under expenditures, the overtime and the uh, 4850 reimbursement. It seems like we are um, getting to our budgeted numbers at a lightning speed, so will that be a budget amendment, or uh, will we be budgeting more? Um, yeah, I, you know, when I look at expense reimbursements, you're talking about a total budget line item of $500. I know. I know. Um, it's fairly insignificant. I don't have written down immediately in front of me what those $424 came from. Um, I can look it up very easily if you want to check in with me. Tomorrow. No, it's, it's, this, this is not a significant amount. Sure. Uh, what was the expense line? The overtime, on the other hand, is a significant one. So. Yeah, you know, I mean, that obviously is driven on the fire side. I mean, the one thing I can say is that uh, beyond not having, we're basically down two positions at the point in time. Uh, you have Captain Heine, who hasn't been at work, and we haven't replaced Joel White's position from his retirement. There is a plan, obviously, for replacing Joel White's position, so those uh, those, both, those two shifts, you know, two out of every three shifts have to be filled with uh, a third person. So it certainly does drive it up. And I will say too, there was a, uh, a uh, although not in this quarter, so never mind, I take that back. Um, there was no OES assignments, um, wildland assignments during Q1. Uh, but that's certainly driving that up. Is, I mean, at the point you have, you're missing two, uh, uh, two shifts. One person for two out of every three shows. May yeah, I make a comment while <coughs> on this particular issue? I can come back to it at the end, but while you're talking about overtime, I just wanted to say something that Chief Roach mentioned at the commission meeting last week. He was talking about um, the fact that we do not have a relief firefighter to cover absences, schooling, birth of children, um, you know, whatever. And somebody was asking him about, well, why can't you hire a relief firefighter? And he said, it's really a wash. So whether you pay the overtime or whether, and not hire a relief firefighter, Chief Roach said that 
if we hired um, an extra firefighter for relief, it would be a wash. That's all I wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for me. Is that it? Okay. I've already got my questions answered. I, I look straightforward. I look good. It, I mean, it's definitely pretty straightforward. I mean, things are where we expect them to be. They're looking good. Uh, I, I do believe that they tie out. I do believe you can look at uh, the revenues compared to very specific expenses. And, you know, I mean, obviously, revenue is driven 99.9% by rec programs and services. Uh, the rentals and things like that in Q1, just because everything else is tax-based as far as uh, park and fire. The one thing I will say is, uh, on a change for once, uh, 463 1145 service contract revenue. Um, that line represents our contract with the county for juvenile hall and and uh, county farm. Um, we've actually already in October received the vast majority. It's split between the county office of education and Marin County Fire. Um, they've already deposited, County Fire's already deposited 79883 their share mm -hmm. into our treasury fund through a, through a fund transfer via Munis. Okay. Um, so we recorded that in October and we typically don't record that until at the earliest the end of uh, January, but usually more like February and March. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that was very nice of, uh, I actually commend Chief Weber because he was the one who reached out and said, hey, I just want to make sure this stays on the radar and Dan Island and the, uh, Deputy uh, Chief uh, Administrative Officer of the County chimed in and forwarded it already. I mean, we just did that last month, and the Board of Supervisors already approved it. They already pushed it through. Wow. So, from a cash position, that's that's good. Any questions from the board? Lydia? Yeah. Um, first, I'd like to thank the district manager for putting this out. This is very um, interesting and clarifying. Except, I mean, you kind of have to know. The, when the revenue comes in, like the taxes or the you know summer stuff. But I did have one question um, on the very first page, about 10 down, where it says special tax assessment. Mm -hmm. Is that the fire department? It's fire tax, park tax. Oh, so that's both. Yeah, if you look at the pages, Linda, at the top of the, of the columns, it either oh, says I, district. Oh, I have it. I don't print that out. Okay, well, even if you look at it on the computer. Um, it says district total on the first three pages, right, that's that's everything right. combined, and then the following pages are each very specific department oh, okay. broken down by department, so park, rec, fire, street lights. Okay. Um, so you can see how the, all of those numbers tie into the first okay. three pages. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a, question, a clarifying question, Eric, when you said uh, the 4631145 service Contract revenue ninety thousand three forty four. That is the juvenile hall and Department of Education. Correct. Okay. Um, well, I and all I want to say is I do have questions. I feel like this uh, is a thirty thousand foot look at uh, our budget, and really, it's really difficult to to understand the specifics of what's going on. But um, I'm going to also join Linda's praise. It's great improvement. Um, yeah. And also, it it's really helpful. also uh, Shane continues to perform well and appreciate everything he does for this community. Anybody else? Uh, let's move to the update of the Marine CSD emergency services success. I'm sorry, could you speak up? Moving on to the update for the uh, ESS committee. Yeah. Jeff, would you like to take it? Oh, I'm doing this again. Okay. okay. Um, so we had our second meeting um, before the uh, fire commission meeting last Tuesday. Um, the single uh, report that was given at that meeting was from the Financial Trends and Drivers Subcommittee, and we reported primarily on pension costs, which uh, we've been investigating for well over a year, and it was fairly easy to pull those numbers together. Um, what it demonstrates is, in particular, 
that the pensions are a key driver to why we are actually figuring, you know, having this committee determine what we're going to do with the emergency services in the future, um, whether we remain independent or not. Um, the, in the past, the um, pension liability has been primarily this huge balloon payment at the end um, called the unfunded liability, but increasingly now, for several reasons, um, the continual um, shortfall of investment results, we are now being required to pay cash amounts every year that compete with, um, with other services that we provide to the extent where five years from now um, we're approaching a quarter of a million dollars in cash that we have to pay every year in order to maintain um, where we are right now with the unfunded liability. So that is one of the primary, if not the primary driver, certainly one of the primary drivers for why we are considering what we need to do with emergency services in Marin. Um, we also made <coughs> some assignments of heads of the committee, and we are hopeful that we, were gonna, we will be having reports from the remaining subcommittees at the next meeting, which um, will either proceed the fire, did the fire commission have a December meeting usually? Uh, yeah. They do? Okay. Probably proceed uh, the fire commission meeting in December. Um, hopefully at that time we might have, and I'll depend on you telling me whether this is possible or not. Um, we've started work on this 10-year uh, timeline, five years of past history, and five years of forecasts. Hopefully we'll have something to present at that next meeting. If not, it'll be shortly thereafter. Yeah, it's certainly going on. Okay, very good. Um, again, we assign heads of each of the um, subcommittees to move forward. And um, one thing that was brought up by a member of the public was um, the potential need to get this story out to um, a broader audience and um, We'll be also looking at perhaps putting an article in the IJ and seeing if we can get a little bit more input from our community earlier rather than waiting until the tail end of this um, analysis, which could be uh, take us as long as uh, through next July. Do you have anything to add? No. That's that report. Okay. Well, can I make, can I say something? Go ahead. Thanks. Um, as far as the communication to the public goes, I know we did mention, or you guys, we all mentioned uh, flyers and how expensive they are to mail. What, um, and I can't remember which one of anybody is on the particular communication area subcommittee, but it's possible that we can hand out flyers. I mean, it's, it takes one hour to hand out 50 flyers. Not in the estates, of course, but in all the other areas of Marinewood and CSA 13. It's one hour, 50 flyers. And I know this because I've done it and done it and done it. So uh, it's a simple thing. Every, if everybody just gave two hours a month, half an hour a week, we could get more information out to the public. Just, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. So. I, actually, I have some questions because I'm not quite understanding what, what Jeff, uh, what, uh, maybe I don't understand what this commission's about. What I'm hearing from you tonight is that it's about um, pensions, and I assume you mean pensions, primarily for the, the fire service for, for, for everyone in, in general. Is that correct? It is a... Um, the subcommittee that provided this report is looking into the financial trends and drivers of which pensions are a large portion. Sure. Okay. Um, most of the reason we are looking, the primary reason we started this subcommittee was uh, due to the possible retirement of our fire chief and what we were going to do with that position, but there is a broader issue, and that is affordability of emergency services here in Marinwood. Okay. So this is one of, I think, five subcommittees that's looking into different facets of 
what that future might be. Okay, and but that I'm a little concerned that everything is is now being done in subcommittees, and uh, this is this is the deliberative body, not the subcommittees, as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, let me ask you a question. Do we have pension liabilities for the sheriffs that uh, patrol around no. here? No. Okay. So maybe we do in a general sense through the, the county. So if, I guess what I'm saying is if we do, um, if somehow we, we figure out some sort of restructuring, maybe that will help us down the line. I mean, uh, the, the one thing that I really think must be addressed in your com committee, and I'm kind of disturbed I haven't heard it yet, is that so much of uh, the work is done outside our district. Two-thirds of the, the calls happen outside our district. So if that's the case, why are we paying 100% of the pension liabilities? I just think it, it's, it's screaming for um, reorganization and uh, efficiency. I think if we can uh, have a better management structure through a, a regional agency, there's going to be more opportunity, better job security for the, the fire department, more job opportunities to move up the line, and really I think that's where the effort should be made. Um, I think I mentioned to you last uh, month that I did have a chance to talk to Gary Phillips and he said, Gary, uh, when are you going to take our money? And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, let us, you know, run our fire department, we'll pay you. Um, and he was like, what are you talking about? And he said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. So I think he's really, I think they are definitely open to talking um, as far, and, and I don't want to lose our guys, I mean, it could be, Marin with fire department all the time, but but on the other on the other hand, let's let's look at this you know down the line here. So so we fulfill our promises to uh, our employees. So uh, is there any independent effort being made now to discuss the possibilities of the merger? Yes, one of the sub there are two subcommittees um, which did not have the opportunity to meet and or report in the last meeting. Uh, one is to look at operational considerations, um, and the other is to um, develop a template of costs and services as a precursor to having conversations with um, as many as three different fire entities in the county um, about what what would a merger look like, what would outsourcing look like, those kind of things. Okay. Um, well, we, we, that is, to me, that's the number one thing that we, we need to hear about and put that message out in the community. I've spoken to some long-term residents. A lot of people kind of don't like the idea. They like the idea of, of keeping um, the Rimwood um, Fire Department uh, as it is, uh, but I think once they see what the advantages are and that it doesn't mean a loss of service, it simply means greater efficiency, I think there'll be big buying and, and we can move ahead. Yeah, I failed to mention that uh, remaining independent is one of the alternatives. Right, right. I, can I follow up Stephen's comment really quickly? Is that I think he actually brings up a decent point in that uh, potentially examining the current shared services agreement might fall into this committee. It absolutely and, is. We just haven't met and discussed it. We just haven't gotten to that point. Yeah. No, I understand. But just definitely keeping that on the radar. Uh, is, uh, because all the things that Stephen just mentioned is part of that shared services agreement that we have between San Rafael and the district. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, certainly an aspect of something to be reviewed is part of this committee as well. To me, it seems to make sense. What I've just received is, again, is a map of those areas that we cover for San Rafael without compensation. The next step is to figure out how much compensation San Rafael is getting for the areas that we're covering. Well, let's just smoke them. Just saying, hey, we'll, we'll give you a million seven. <laughs> well, we've got 
quite a bit of analysis to do, yeah. and we're, we're beginning that. Um, again, for a number of reasons, that particular subcommittee was unable to meet last month, but I'm confident we will be meeting shortly. Yeah. I would like to um, recognize Jeff for his leadership on this topic and for the hard work he continues doing, not only analyzing our liabilities, but also um, strategizing about what a reasonable future of the district might look like. Um, what I would caution everybody to do is um, withhold the emotions and um, anecdotal evidence um, and really listen to the numbers and the thorough unbiased analysis because that will be our friend. The data will be our friend in arriving at the most logical path forward. Well done, taken. Yeah. And then? Um, I just wanted to mention this to everybody in case you didn't know, but especially Stephen. Sam Rafael does pay for our dispatch service, mm -hmm. which could be quite costly to us. Mm -hmm. They pay for that and they also pay for the accounting of our individual calls. The, um, the programming or system or whatever it is, the accounting system. So that's those two things are biggies. Sure, but still, <coughs> one point seven for all of Santa Benicia, uh, uh, Los, whatever it is, uh, and the uh, what they call uh, yeah golf course or something like that. It's a it's actually a bigger square footage area and I think it may actually be more populated. Okay, and so they're paying 1.7 million bucks. So we're paying 2.8 or the capital is also there. For that for the emergency services yeah. session. Yeah. Um, we didn't put the uh, we didn't put the presentation in the minutes for the board, did we? I, I actually thought about that when I was re-reviewing the packet that it probably would have been nice. It was published in the in the packet, packet for, for the ESS committee the, the board. Okay. I believe I sent that to the board as well. Right. I, don't, I don't know if I did, but it's on the website. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any other questions? Um, no. I, I, I have a question about CalPERS that can lay that stuff. Are you, are you you're talking about that now, right? Um, the next thing on the agenda is the resolution 2017-09, fixing the employer's contribution under the Public Employees Medical and Hospital Care Act. We're supposed to approve this Correct. resolution. Yeah, we do this every year. Uh, CalPERS, we uh, business and changes their rates every year. This year, the rates went up six uh, percent. Uh, at least the rate that we use is our standard baseline rate, which is the Kaiser Bay Area rates. Uh, last year, I think they went up about 4.5 percent. The year before that, they actually went down a little bit. Um, every year, they renegotiate their contracts with all of their providers. So when they come up with the new numbers, uh, this is where it stands. It's a uh, you're looking at about a anywhere from a uh, Forty to uh, about a forty dollar increase or so for uh, say a single person to uh, roughly a hundred dollar increase per month for a family. May I make a motion? You may make a motion. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Okay. Um, I approve the resolution as presented. Second. Second. Discussion. Yeah. <coughs> Um, I recall seeing a report, because this uh, this covers not only active employees, but retirees, is correct? correct? Um, I saw a report as of year in 2016 of a, uh, a former employee who has been off our payroll for something like 15 years, um, retired, and still is on a family plan. Is there any way for us to go back and say, see if these charges are legitimate? Um. They're, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, we can go back and look, but they're they're 
uh, you know, they're tracking this by social security numbers and everything else, and I believe it's up to age 26 or 26 something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and depending on how old the person was when they retired, uh, they were 50 years old. Uh, I'm just doing the math for my kids. I mean, I'm 44 and have a four-year-old. Uh, uh, oh, tell them if you have no idea. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, I'm 44 and I'm a one-year-old. So it's, okay. uh, uh, but uh, believe me when I tell you CalPERS isn't in the business of providing anything that they don't have to provide. <laughs> okay. uh, um, I mean, sure, if you want to send me the particular name, we can look into it, but I'd be very surprised if that slipped through the cracks. I mean, they're, you know, I think Caron can attest to this. I mean, everything is submitted via social security numbers, everything else. They don't just take our word for it, okay. um, per se. Uh, the other thing I did want to bring up in this, uh, you know, a couple things, and I put this in a memo. I mean, obviously, this increase uh, is, is factored in. I usually actually factor in a 5% increase, so this is a little bit above that. Um, and then uh, as retirees reach Medicare age, they incur reduced rates, you know, based on, on Medicare uh, premiums. But I don't think this will push us over budget. No, I don't want to say that. But, uh, we, I, you know, we've had changes. You know, people, families grow. People go from plus one to family or uh, on the flip side and not to be morbid uh, to just point, you know, sometimes families go to two or, uh, or uh, you know, just, uh, people pass. I mean, when, you know, when Genevieve Bolding passed, her retirement, got, her medical thing got cut half, and it's just her her, her husband is on it now, and you know, I think that's like three hundred dollars a month. Uh, um, so you know, they change. Right? You can't make a concrete prediction on this, but I think we're still within. I anticipated an increase in the budget, and I always do. Well, yeah, one, one of the things that I hear said often that as soon as someone retires, there's no more financial obligation for the district with the, I guess, with the exception of the, uh, the health care, right? That's uh, and pension. Uh, oh, and the pension can, can continues as well? Oh, yeah, that's where the unfunded accrued liabilities come from in a large way. We don't contribute because there's no more payroll to contribute, oh. but we're still on the hook uh, uh, to making sure that the the, the, pensions the, the money is in the kid <laughs> that they have the money to fund the pensions that are out there. Uh, okay, so we, we have a general obligation, but it's not a specific obligation to to uh, an individual employee as far as the pension is concerned. Is that correct? Um, it's pool. because I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's part of a pool. And right. then, and then, okay. correct. Right. Right. So, um, depends on investment. I rates. think everyone received it maybe a month ago from CSPP. Uh, there's this district down in Southern California, some Oki district. They decided, hey, they can't afford CalPERS anymore, so they tried to drop out. <laughs> and they got like a $3 million bill or something just. Just unbelievable. So and that was a, a group of like, I think four people were enrolled. Four people, right? Maybe six. So, yeah, I, so I they got the handcuffs on us. Mm -hmm. So, so I think the popular phrase is there: the Hotel California. Yeah. So I, I just think uh, we're doing the right things by looking at this reorganization and let's let's get aggressive, let's get real, and let's take pride that we're going to be the one district that does it right in Marin. Does this have anything to do with the resolution that we're voting on right now? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, we'll call for a vote then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Increase cash held in Wells Fargo checking account by forty-five thousand <coughs> total. Revolving balance of two hundred twenty-five thousand to accommodate requirement of electronic payments of health premiums to CalPERS. This again is another housekeeping, is it not? Yeah, I, you know this came up uh, at the beginning of the fiscal year where CalPERS put in the requirement that pension payments had to be made via electronic fund transfer. Uh, that is. Pretty much impossible to do direct from our treasury account, but it's very easy to do from our Wells Fargo account. Um, Carolyn's actually got the process down very well and easy. It just means we're 
rather than writing a check to CalPERS, we're writing a check to ourselves uh, to reimburse those costs and putting it into the Wells Fargo account. So what it comes down to. I chose forty-five thousand, uh, trying to anticipate the increases uh, that were that are coming. Uh, what our monthly bill is. Uh, keeping in mind that forty-five thousand is before the deductions. Um, that's the whole bill. Um, we deduct direct from every employee's payroll their part, and then that gets deposited back into our uh, treasury fund account. But we're obligated to pay the entire. We are obli We have to pay the entire bill, correct? So, uh, but the entire bill doesn't represent the total district cost. So we're voting to approve this. Uh, I would like a motion to uh, approve it as presented. Yes. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. So again, we've, this is not unprecedented. We've already done it once. Do we have any issues with the county about doing this? Okay. Do we lose interest by doing this? Um, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. You uh, forty-five thousand dollars. It's less cash we will have in the county account and our checking account that we do this from. It's obviously not an interest-bearing mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. um, to that point, I mean, if we really wanted to go through it, I believe we gain a, probably a very minimal amount of interest, uh, maybe in, right around the county level, if not less, in the money market account that we have as a holding account. That uh, it would just be involving a lot of various transfers. Mm -hmm. I don't know that the uh, dollar interest or so per quarter would, would justify the extra work. Understood. Uh, you mentioned the term revolving. Um, do we put this? Do we transfer these funds when they're due or just before they're due? Correct. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so just it, instead of paying the bill and writing a check, we transfer the funds. Right. Okay. So so we, we can designate a bit. We can designate them in advance and do a very specific. But Carolyn uh, doesn't process the initial round that way. What she does is wait until I give her the the invoice and the breakdown on her department, and then she makes the transaction and then I approve. Okay. I do want to say the DMV use fee, that is actually null and void now. That is void. Um, there is no DMV use fee. Uh, I really got to hand it to the chief. We did a lot of legwork on a lot of this. Um, I'm sure he probably had some help. I think uh, Caesar probably helped him out, uh, the part of the team. that This contract goes, the build contract for the engine goes before my time. This was done in, I want to say, I think uh, sometime during 2014. Uh, and it just seems that somehow uh, the proper paperwork wasn't didn't get into the DMV's hands. At the end of the day, we don't have a $5,300 DMV use fee. Um, that has been waived. It is exempt as a government agency, and it was just a matter of Tom finding uh, the right person to talk to who realized everything. We have the plates. Everything is legit. The title being sent to the lien holder. It's a done deal. Yay. Yeah. So we did cut a check, and it was, uh, it was voided. That's good. Uh, so this isn't the first time we bought an apparatus in this district. What, what it was the first time, time I guess we bought one out of state. I can't 100% answer that question for you. That would be a better question for the chief. I certainly asked a lot of those questions, and I don't know if because it was an out of state thing. Um, I mean, they certainly showed that we paid sales tax and everything on it. It's just that it's within the contract itself. There wasn't an actual line that says the builder submits all the proper paperwork to the Department of Motor Vehicles. So it got missed. Ironically, it came up in an audit by the lien holder, um, a third party audit who said, hey, can we just see a copy of the title here? And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't think we ever actually got it's this. It's Mr. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they fought, and the lien holder was incredibly understanding, and they recognized too that typically, I mean, these things come from people who say the vehicle, you know, say the apparatus, uh, and somehow it just didn't happen. So anyway, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're good. No harm, no foul. Okay. The audit that'll be completed by. 
well, it's got to be completed no later than January 31st because that's the deadline to submit everything to the state controller's office. I actually uh, was working with Michael today, sent him a lot of uh, documentation. It, it's, bit, it's getting pretty close. I don't think it'll be presented in December, but it'll be presented in January, I'm assuming. Okay. Same time it was presented last year. Uh, uh, I don't expect to find any large surprises in any form, and I think we've done a very good job of addressing uh, uh, the few findings that he listed last year, or not even findings, they, they had no findings, his recommendations. And yeah, we're covering some of those too. Right? That's my point, is a, a lot of those recommendations, I think, will disappear if we've, uh, we've fulfilled his recommendations. Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then the five-year financial forecast is the other big one. Um, I think uh, Jeff mentioned it earlier. I mean, this really ties into also the work that's happening within there because with that, uh, we're not strictly looking at fire when we're looking at financial uh, revenue and expenditure needs. We're looking at uh, across the district. Obviously, there's a focus on fire, but this will parlay very well into that. And uh, uh, again, kind of echoing uh, Isabella, as a Jeff uh, put together a very good template. And uh, I spent a lot of time, at least for last fiscal year, trying to really nail in and put in the proper numbers and everything else. And then we have a lot of data to uh, be able to fill in the future, but this is also going to take a look at the past too. So it's actually a, a little bit bigger than just five years out. It's here's where we've been, here's the financial trends, here's where it's going, here's where we expect it to be. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Any questions? No. Public? Uh, I guess we'll move on to the fire department. Draft minutes of the fire commission. Any questions? No. Only for the chief. Chief. Um, <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> um, the concept of putting a volunteer group together to start vegetation management next to properties. Has that gone anywhere? Um, no. I mean, did you receive a, a, a note or something from somebody that was interested in that? Or? No, I, I did not. I, you know, the, a lot of people, with all the fires in the North Bay, this obviously is kind of a heightened alert thing right now sure. in people's mind. Uh -huh. um, alert might not be the right word, but it's definitely entered back into consciousness and you know a lot of people kind of reach out to the fire chief on these types of things uh, uh, you know and he definitely has you know various bed management projects that they work on and there's notions of uh, doing some levels of volunteer uh, efforts on there but again these would be much better questions for Tom yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll catch up with the thing yeah, I mean, and it's looking at it more from a fire prevention standpoint than mm -hmm. I would say an open space maintenance standpoint by any stretch. Oh, I absolutely understand. Um, and one note just that I noticed on here, um, on the Chief's minutes, the uh, he's got the date wrong up top. This wasn't from the September 5th meeting. You know, obviously, I've uh, got to change that. I did a brief scan and just looking at who was present and knowing who was there um, and what was uh, talked about. This was from not September 5th, right. but from November 7th. So we'll make sure uh, he corrects that before they get into the fire commission packet. That's what's November 7th meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I ask a question about vegetation management. Sure. <clears throat> um, well, actually, I'll make a quick comment. I go to San Rafael Fire Commission meetings, and I know they are expanding extensively in fact they even hired a vegetation management person to help out with managing all these um, fire risks in San Rafael but I was just wondering if we could use any measure a funds for vegetation management I have read that yes they can be used they are used have we thought about using measure a funds for vegetation management? I haven't thought about that at this point, no. Uh, I haven't asked that question either of the county specifically, uh, who released the contact that I work with for Measure A funds on these things. 
I know uh, that when Measure A came in for us, uh, a vast majority of it was looked at uh, deferred maintenance, capital needs, things like that. Uh, and that was the uh, the shed. Uh, uh, well, just Main you know, all, all of the whole nine yards. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's the direction that we've been following. So where would you? Where would I start asking? to use some of our measuring money? I mean, who, which group? Would it be the Fire Commission or would it be the Park and Rec Commission? It would be more under the Park and Rec Commission. Because you think they are in charge of measuring money? No, I think the board's in charge of the funds and they approve the spending plan. Uh, ultimately, I think the county's in charge of measuring money and it would be a decent question to ask the County Parks Department who oversees everything on, hey, is this something that would be uh, allowable. Uh, with that said, I'll, yeah, I'm happy to ask them, but uh, I would also uh, say, you know, we go through and look at, and we just did it at the last Park and Rec meeting, uh, uh, ideas, thoughts, priorities for Measure A funding, and then move it uh, every year. It's included in the annual budget, and the plan is presented to the board, and they uh, uh, approve it or disapprove it, and then I send it to the county for final approval. How the process works. Yeah, but would there be a fight between the two departments to get the money? I, I, I don't know. So it would be each of the commissions and then the board making the final decision if the commission, if the fire commission said, hey, can we take 10 grand for this year for vegetation management to add into the 10 grand that we already budget in the fire department? for vegetation management. Can we take it from Measure A? And the Park and Rec Department might say, no, 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 we need that for the parks or something. I don't know, we haven't had that conversation. Okay. So if we do have that conversation, I'll probably be the one that brings it up. Okay, and we'll see what happens. Okay, thanks. So, see you. Yeah, so this is kind of building off of what uh, I was talking about. So, uh, yeah, the, the fires were hor horrific, and I'm sure we all know somebody who lost a home, uh, or worse, uh, up in Sonoma. Did we send any uh, of our guys up there? Just curious. Um, what's this got to do with? Yeah, I. I no, I mean, I'm trying to understand. This is the fire department. Please let me continue on because I, okay. it's concerning vegetation management. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't know. It doesn't sound like we have ever been terribly active in vegetation management. Is that is that true? I don't know. I've been up in the thing. hills. Yes, there's vegetation management all over the place. Active. I mean, I've been up in the hills too, and I, I see downed timber up there. I'm concerned, and I was thinking. the piles of brush that they've cleared out of the fire roads. And is, it, is it, when you say, okay, so I would like to know a little bit more about that. Maybe you can just tell us right now. Why would I? I have no I'm knowledge of it. I know what I see. Okay. I see work's been done. So there was a large fire, I believe in the 80s or 90s, it was before my time, that swept down the valley. And um, I think while this fire up in Sonoma is in, in fresh in everybody's memory, that um, we should put some resources to make certain that we're monitoring the, the health of our open space with regards to uh, uh, fire. Um, so I guess I'm saying, kind of, I, I don't don't have a specific number or fee, but I just think it's something we, we should not ignore as a community, because after all, we are about open space, aren't we? Well, yeah. I believe that the fire department's been, they work at that Mr. pretty constantly. Uh, point of order, please. Go ahead. Point of order. Okay. Point of order, so you don't want to discuss the issue? Is that we well, are we're not discussing the that draft issue. Minutes of the fire commission. If you would we're like just to reviewing the, the uh, fire commission meeting. So, you, come on. 
we're talking about the fire department. The fire chief's not here. He would answer these questions. But if you want to ignore the, the needs, the fire dangers that we, we face in this community, that's fine. But I think it's something that the community as a whole has a has an interest, and I hope that and you take I, some leadership in this area. Chief, Thank you. No, I don't need to hear your here. response. Go ahead, talk about whatever you want. Thank you. Fire department kitchen remodel, approve or reject? Uh, well, within here, uh, you can see a couple different memos that I need in. One is from uh, Chief Roto, and one is from Herb Schwartz. Um, the, the best I can kind of say on this is uh, Chief Roach, Irv, and myself did sit down. We did meet with the contractor after the last uh, after the last uh, board meeting. Uh, to his defense, he did bring up a relatively uh, good point in that our bid did not specifically have a, a line asking for uh, percentages on overhead and or profit um, and he did not necessarily apply a straight across rate on his bid items uh, he let us know certainly some ideas for you know if you cut this out I had X amount budgeted for it at the end of the day um, I again I don't certainly don't want to speak for the chief he has his memo you can read it uh, or Irv, he has his memo you can read it I don't believe that the chief was a uh, necessarily in favor of his ideas that it would take to get it all the way down to sixty-seven thousand dollars, which is what the board approved at the last meeting. So the chief was not in favor of Correct. the contractors suggestions to cut it. Correct. The contractor was in effect? no, he didn't actually identify ways to get all the way down there until you really got down to uh, Kind of modifying the project to some degree, I would say. You know, he was talking about going with more residential Best Buy type appliances, uh, uh, other various things. I'm trying to pull this off the top of my head. I apologize. I wish the chief was here. He's the one who spent more time on this as dinner, which I'm glad that they both put in these uh, these memos. But uh, you know, like on the painting line, he said that he had two thousand dollars budgeted for paint. Um, he had two thousand dollars budgeted for that, and the contractor's point was there wasn't a place for me to put any level of overhead uh, distinctly or any level of uh, profit distinctly, and that those things were kind of set in here. He didn't have this is the exact cost, you know. No, it's not going to cost me twelve thousand dollars to have uh, paint done. Well, I make the motion. Accepted. Accepted as presented for eighty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Pardon? Accepted at eighty-seven thousand. I mean. Yes, that's what she said. Honestly, well, I'm sorry, but I mean, she's honestly, got such a truth, voice, it just depends on what. Eric, what do you need to get the ball rolling on this? Like, what do you need the formal motion to say? Because. At the end of the day, whether it's cost eighty seven thousand, whether it costs one hundred and ten thousand, whether it costs twenty thousand, you need to move on this. And Thank you. it's I mean, I don't even think we should put a cap on it at this point. We have no control. The person who's going to have I mean, right, it's when the work is happening, then that's where you know the numbers become real. But it's only going to take more time and more expensive if we keep delaying. Um, so but I, I said 87,000 in my motion, I think. Do I hear a second? Good. May I make a motion? You may. Um, God, I hate this motion. Um, to give the um, district manager authority to enter into a contract with CW as um, a minus CW. Sorry. So, 
CWS construction. Um, with the um, suggestions made in um, Director Schwartz's memo, the first paragraph that effectively um, cuts the expense by $10,000. And I hate making this motion. Do I hear a second? So, just to kind of clarify what you're saying, that it costs not to exceed $77,000. Yes. Can you repeat that motion so that I can understand it, please? To approve the CWS uh, bid with the amendments as suggested by Director Schwartz in his memo, the first paragraph. Ah. Could you give a specific amount that you're? It uh, amounts to seventy-seven thousand dollars in total. So that's what um, you want to approve. So, yes. Um, okay. His suggestions are to exclude the soffit removal, since there is none. Um, no counter lights, under counter lights, and um, not fund the uh, refrigerator replacement. Do I hear a second? No. Can we have a discussion without having a motion on the floor? Of course. If we rescope and rebid this project and we get no offers to do the work, what happens? You're, well, you're a 100% square one. If you would have already rejected both of these bids, you can't rebid it without rejecting these bids. Sorry, I understand that. What I'm saying is if we rescope, we reject these bids, mm -hmm. we define an appropriate scope for this project that's affordable for this district and we go out and bid it again, and we get no offers at all. Do we, we have to wait until we get an offer? No, because you have a deadline for offers. You'd simply re-bid again and again and again, hoping that somebody would come in. Um, How long is the process to re-bid? Well, it doesn't take very long, but the one, the, the one thing I would recommend is putting the bid out if you're going to re-bid for a longer period of time than we did the initial one. I think uh, that's a little bit of the, you gotta give these guys some time to see it, some time to go through it, some time to respond. I, I don't think, I think we gave them either seven or seven to 10 days, seven days. Um, you know, typically these types of bids on government contracts are out there for 30 days. Uh, so I think you, you would want to have a longer scope to allow people to see it, allows the work to get out more, allows the building exchanges to get them. But, you know, I mean, you really had, if these things meet some weekly, some bi-weekly, uh, and it's at those builders exchange meetings where a lot of times they see a lot of these things when they go, I mean, I've worked with contractors on things in my own house and I know uh, there was days where they didn't come in so much later because they were at the builders exchange meeting. Um, I would I would allow yourself the best chance of success. The one thing I would say to Jeff is, you you know you also run the possibility of scaling the bid back, re bidding it, uh, and you know just to kind of play devil's advocate, you get bids that come in even higher than what you received here, and you're back into. A, potential rejection mode uh, because now they want to charge you even more for less of a project. I mean, they can bid anything that they want to bid. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think there's some level of risk with that as well. I believe that the scope of this project is still defined from the very beginning um, that there are appliances that do not belong in a construction project. They could have easily been replaced outside of the construction project um, at much less cost. In the vernacular, this is what is called gold plating. And um, 
for all intents and purposes, we've now missed a, uh, a number of opportunities to get an affordable scope, defined, bid upon, and approved um, through the subjective opinions of what absolutely needed to go in. What absolutely needed to go into this project was replacing the water service and the peninsula, the dishwasher, the sink, et cetera, et cetera. Other things could have easily been deferred. And that's why I would propose rejecting these bids. Can I say? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm getting more and more frustrated every month this goes by because I see both sides very clearly. The board wants to save money. You guys want a kitchen. At the end of the day, we're not, we sort of pass the point of working together on this, right? Like, they're going to get more and more pissed every month that we don't do this. And every month that we don't do this, we run a actual very, very high probability this is going to get more and more expensive. As a direct result of the recent fires in the North Bay, all construction costs and markets are going up. Right? I'm in the middle of a construction project. I just got back a bid for a million dollars to build 1,800 square feet. I had the whole team come out. I had everybody come out and go over, like, can you do this any cheaper? And at the end of the day, they said no. The question was, you know, for me is, does that make any sense? We're at the point now where what makes sense? It doesn't make, it, it's painful financially. The numbers are really frustrating. I get it. But what makes sense is to put a kitchen in there. And we can look back and say, what is shoulda, coulda, at like 15 million junctures. But right here, right now, we have, if we have a bid, I say we say thank you, hold our noses, and sign it. And are grateful, and we put a kitchen in there, and we put this to bed. Very reasonable. It's, it's been, a, um, I think, the largest blow up in the district's history that I'm aware of in terms of this entire process. Um, I agree with Jeff in terms of um, defining the um, um, uh, RFP um, in terms of numbers right from the start. I remember making the suggestion of putting a cap of $40,000 on, on the RFP that was not accepted. Um, also, the, the problem is that we need to work with the DIR approved contractor and that elevates the price right at the start. And the number of responses we got to our first RFP are concerning, so much so that I don't know if we would get much response to our second RFP. And then delaying it for months and months I too am tired of the status quo and want to move it ahead. It pains me to look at $77,000 going to a project that, in my opinion, could have been easily done for half. Be that as it may, we still have no motion. We do. I made one. I would like to um, remind folks, and maybe you don't remember, there are two different things that have been said in the past. One, Irv Schwartz said, we could buy the appliances and do the installs ourselves, like Mr. Naylor was saying. It's not going to save us any money because the contractor gets the appliances cheaper. And Irv sat there and said, it's a wash. We said, you can get the appliances cheaper and have the contractor install, or we can pay full price for the appliances and install at our cost. Okay, that's one thing you're forgetting. The second thing that nobody has brought up tonight is that the fire commission has agreed to give up their utility pickup truck that they need. Okay, this is something that they need, they were planning on. They were going to take the money from the sale of our old fire truck, some of it, I think maybe 50% of it, and put that towards the utility pickup truck. Instead, the fire commission, and it, it's right in the minutes of the fire commission, I don't know why nobody's mentioned it, but the fire commission and the chief have agreed to give up the, the utility pickup truck. 
for at least a year. Take that extra money that will more than cover the extra amount of money that you guys are dilly dallying, and nitting and nagging and, and picking and picking about. And these guys here are suffering because we have a horrific, disgusting, dirty, unsanitary, unhealthy, morale busting kitchen. So think about the money that the fire department is willing to give up by not purchasing the utility pickup truck that they need. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys like to comment on that, I can. <clears throat> um, that's an irrational idea. Um, first of all, I don't irrational think irrational or ir irrational? Irrational. Ah, thank um, you. I don't think that um, there's going to be giving that up to afford a kitchen that is, you know, ridiculously expensive to pass that on to the taxpayers. That's not even a, an issue. There may never be a utility truck pur purchase here. Is that a personal opinion or a board opinion? Just out of curiosity. That is my opinion for you. Steven? Yeah, uh, I would like to support uh, Jeff's comments. Um, and um, I also I want to comment on the note that Chief Roach uh, left and he said, should we, we don't want to go under the table on this, like there's something wrong with uh, looking out for the interest of the district. I think we should move ahead quickly with uh, the maximum legal, uh, uh, the maximum project that we can do, which is under $25,000. Now, how far that gets us, I don't know, but uh, we know we had a bid for the kitchen earlier at $25,000. I'm sure there's other contractors there. I don't think, I mean, yeah, the people may try to tag us, but if we get, uh, if we, if we, we really have to address the needs of our employees. Now, what really irks me and irks the public that has taken the time to look at this is we've got $4,500 uh, stoves, zero one appliance or Viking appliance, I'm not even 100% sure. So it's going all out maximum. You know, I don't know anyone on my street that, that has the, 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 the level of, of luxury uh, uh, remodels that that, uh, that they want to put into this kitchen. That's Let's, overhead and profit. Okay, I'm. Uh, you don't. You still. GE works just perfectly fine for boiling, uh, boiling water. I trust me. Okay, I, there we. There's different ways to do this. Now I understand that the the employees want something nice, but. As Jeff said, the most important thing here is what, we're, what the future of the department's going to be. I just think at this juncture, to spend a ton of money in that fire department doesn't make a whole lot of sense till we have a direction of what the fire department as a whole is going to do. That, may, that kitchen may not exist. It might, maybe this will be an ambulance base and they need it for something else. I don't know, but what I'm saying is we have the ability now Take it upon yourselves to do what you can. The, the, the thing that you have the power to do is the $25,000 project. Let's see what we can get for $25,000. And I think you'll be surprised. I think you can get pretty far with $25,000. That's all I have to say. Anybody oh, the other, no, just one other thing. You're not in a competitive bidding environment now, okay, with the two contractors who are talking to each other and everything that's gone, gone on, it's not competitive. So it really does have to go out to bid because you've really changed the terms of the contract. Sir? Yeah, once again, uh, this can is getting kicked down the road. And contractors' prices are going to go up. It's, according to Eric, it was, you have a specified contract contractor that has to go with. These people know what they're doing. They know how to fuck the deal as much as they can. If all these contractors are going to be working 
big dollars, much like Leah said, up north, because they're already talking about pulling all these contractors in from Oregon and Nevada and everything else. It's going to inflate the prices for sure. I mean, I, I, I think you could all agree about that. I mean, and a contractor is going to be able to put that bid in and say, I'm going to ask 100000 now. What's happening here is we're restricted, it seems, by the fact that we've got to go by the uh, certified contractors through the Builders Guild. And if we continue to go and kick the can down the road, I think it's just going to get more expensive. That's my comment. Anybody else? Well, just follow the law. It's $25,000 that you can do without going to this contract. They still have both of the board, but do I hear any other motions? So did they die about it? What's the procedure? There was no second on yours, and there was no second on hers. So are they dead? Then? So they're dead without a second. So the last motion was Isabella's. Okay. I could make mine again, and we could just kind of keep going around and around, but I mean, like, what's the uh, board? Whether um, just in terms of process, um, Irv is not voting, correct? Because yes. he's not here, he doesn't get a vote. So even though he indicated his preference, he's not voting. Gentlemen, it's up to you. Fight it out. I don't make the motion. Yes, you, you can. can. You can. Oh, yeah, you can make motions, you can second motions. Uh, you just sound like first in line, but in a situation like this. Yeah, I would be first in line. I hate the bid, the low bid as it is. There are so many holes in it that you just want to scream, what the hell is this even here for? <clears throat> but it's the only one we have. Can I? Should I make a little comment? Go ahead. Personally, I think Isabella's idea has teeth. Um, I, I think in sitting down with the contractor, I was part of that. I think we all recognize that there is $10,000 worth of savings that can happen without compromising the project and still providing a good project. I think there's some things that were there, I, I agree with Leah in the point that at, uh, this thing, I mean, it, it does, it, it does, it needs to move forward. I, I understand the costs and the expenses and I look at our finances every day and I'm gonna follow whatever direction I receive from the board at the end of the day when it's said and done. I mean, uh, I kind of walked out of the last meeting with, find a way to get it down to 66, 67,000 or reject. Uh, and admittedly, I haven't, rejected it and I've kind of stuck my neck, I feel, in some degrees on the line here by not doing that. Uh, uh, I think if we rebid it, it's going to be a longer process. I think even if we rescope it, there's, it's going to be there's not necessarily guaranteed. I think you're still going to send it out to the same people who, by this point, have seen the earlier one. The bids that have gone out have been made public. They know what other people have bid on them. I think if it comes, I think, I think if you come back with even higher bids at that point, you're really going to have no choice but to accept it, um, and you might it, it might backfire, uh, possibly. It, you might get a lower bid. I don't know. I agree with all of these other comments that uh, in this area right now, construction prices are going to start skyrocketing quickly. Uh, I don't think that people are necessarily already building on these damaged areas. I think you're still a ways away from that, personally, just because the cleanup and everything else is going to take an incredible, uh, it, 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 you're probably until the spring. With that said, they're already starting to ramp up and plan out and do all that. I mean, I'm talking to people on other projects in my house and thinking I need to get this done. I think at a max of 77000 I wouldn't say by cutting this or cutting that, I certainly have some ideas of things that can be cut. Uh, the contractor stated that he had $2,000 budgeted for permits. We've already done that. Um, 
Well, I mean, the, the dumb uh, face for eight, that was ridiculous, and the painting for 12. Is right, but, but with that said, I thought that he made a decent point, Bill, in that I think that we didn't put out a really great RFP in the essence of making it very clear, please, you know, list cost on this and list listing your percentage of overhead and your percentage of profit okay. as separate items that you can take those percentages with each item that you take and say, great, we're removing this, this, or that. Um, at least on the profit margin part of it. Um, I, I think they're between the soffit that doesn't exist, that's an easy thousand dollars that can come off the top. But just in terms of contract management, um, I personally, while I think undercap lights are great, I don't know that they're entirely, uh, they're a luxury item, so to speak, and you put some nice lighting up front, it's not that big of a kitchen and it's not that dark of a room and you have some, uh, that lighting up top, I think the lighting will do and uh, down the line if they want to install undercab, uh, that's something that uh, isn't that hard to do uh, except when you get into hiding wires and doing all of that. Um, so I've already identified five, six thousand, I think between the chief and myself working with the contractor, um, being a little bit more judicious, we can find another 4,000, and I think that's still, based on the conversation I was involved with the contractor, we, we, we can find it. I, I, I agree, it's a ridiculous amount to spend. I just, the thought of rebidding it, not only for the time delay, the thought that it's a complete wild card and what you get back is, you know, it's a roll of the dice to some degree. You don't know what you're gonna get back. Isabel was If you do rebid it, are you going to have to redo the plans? Because the plans are not exactly what you want. Yes. The plans. I would recommend that you redo the plans to some degree. Yeah, for sure. because the plans have screwed up things too. To some degree. Yeah. Are you going to have to redo the permit as well? No. Even if it's if it gets rebid, if you change the plan, sure. That's a good question. Yeah, you would. If you change the plans, the permit is approved on the plans that were submitted. So you, are, you are correct. Um, so you go through some of that as well. I don't know if it would be, I, I don't know what the total ramification of that would be. I think at the worst case scenario, you're into the next, whatever it was, $1,300 more. Again, but it had to go through and issue another permit plus uh, Tom's time that he spent down there and kind of, uh, and you know, and he did a lot of late work getting them to approve this as, a non-commercial, uh, even though the property is owned commercial and everything else. I, I, I'm not thrilled about spending 70, 70, I just, given the environment, the things I've learned, I don't know that you're going to find a better price that, uh, to do a, a full kitchen and it could be so changed the complete scope of things it's all to good. gamble what you get back. You it's, good. it's a good motion then to second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's on the board now. Mm -hmm. Can I, modif uh, can I recommend it be modified a little bit? Because Isabella was very specific and I would follow Irv's suggestions. I would just say not to exceed $77,000. Uh, and, and I think we can do that, okay. if, if you don't mind. Do you have a comment? Yeah, my concern is that the big concern is somebody could get sick serving food there, cleaning up in a slop sink at the wash machine, and it's soaked and dirty clothes. You know, we certainly don't need the poor to help here. That's for sure. But the motion to me sounds acceptable, but I have nothing to say. Why, I would like to address why are you going with the top of the line luxury custom home type appliances? You don't need to do that. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. You change that? They're not custom. They okay, I uh, forty five hundred. I've never paid forty five hundred dollars for a stove, so I don't know. I wouldn't pay more than a thousand. Five thousand dollars for another. What? So I paid five thousand dollars. Well, so I, and if it's in your home, there's a motion that's on the table. Okay. Call for a vote. All those in favor. Screwing the taxpayer. If you guys want to be treated nice, you keep treating the taxpayers. 
Right. Please repeat the motion. It was Isabella's motion. Modified. Modified. Isabella's motion. It was the kitchen to not exceed uh, 77. 77. To give the district manager Thank authority you. to enter into contract with CSW Construction not to exceed $77,000. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Fire activity summary and chief report. Review. Can I ask one more question for you along with that? Okay. Ryan, I only ask you to do the captain. I mean, do you think this is reasonable and moving forward to make it happen and we can hopefully work with them at 77000 to fix this kitchen done? I mean, is this a, is this a reasonable, acceptable plan? Um, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I would believe so. Yeah, I would believe so. Steve can talk about $25,000 or not, but these have to be DIR. No, uh, they don't. The well, is well, they, do. that, they approved the motion. What I was looking at was the people who use the kitchen every day. I know where you're going with this, but the motion's done. I mean, they got a 77. Well, I want to make sure they felt this. Business. The district was trying to move and be fair with it. Uh, so, so. Are you going to just take all the, Shh, the taxpayers' money, guys? Okay. I mean, we appreciate your work. Fire but, activity and chief report. Keeps them out here. Any questions? And this is for you, Stephen. On the uh, chief's report, there's the vegetation management board on there. So. I, I, need to see. I, I don't have it up. Questions. Can you tell me what, what it said? It says uh, the Marin County Fire Department fuels crew completed a vegetation management project along Queenstone Fire Road 
preparation for regrading the road, which will hopefully be late in November. A number of calls from residents concerned about wildland fire safety. Done four vegetation management inspections and given residents suggestions. So it's an ongoing process, as you can see. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, next fire commission meeting is December 5th. Park and Recreation. Draft minutes. <clears throat> Review. Any questions? I, I'm sorry. I wanted to add a comment while you guys were in the fire section, and I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but uh, most of the time, in all these huge fires, the factor that contributes the most to the destruction is the wind. Mm -hmm. And would it be possible to somehow, I know a lot of people use nextdoor.com neighbors and stuff, if there was a wind, uh, if, if there was, there was no one, if there was going to be a windy day or something, especially during the summertime, would it be possible to put out something on nextdoor.com saying we're expecting windy, uh, we're expecting a lot of high winds? I'm just... Yeah, you know, I, and I think... I think pretty much everybody in Marinwood knows it's windy almost every day. Five o'clock, yeah. So, I guess, I don't know. No, I mean, I, is it, so high the high chief every now and then does put out certain things on next door, more from through his personal account <laughs> updates that come through from the county, kind of some things are copy and paste, or hey, this is why you're smelling smoke, or this. Uh, you know, he, he does try to do some of that stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, while well, I think it's a great idea, please recognize that uh, the chief isn't here right now. I mean, you're pretty much looking at the entire administrative uh, uh, resource of the, of the district as a whole. Uh, and it's tough for us sometimes just to kind of get to those things, too. Uh, but uh, I, I would say definitely pay attention when you see things that are posted by Tom Roach, because a lot of times he'll use his personal account because our corporate, uh, so to speak, government agency account is very limited in interactions that we can have, but Tom lives here in Marinwood as well, as do I, so uh, although I don't use my personal account for anything district related, he often does because he's very well known in this neighborhood as the chief. Right. So keep an eye out for posts from Tom. Very good, thank you. Yep. Well, Sam Rafael Patch just put a post out exactly saying the mm -hmm. thing about tomorrow night and the next morning. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Any questions on uh, park and rec? No. Anybody? How heavily is the mini park used? Um, it's heavily used. Um, the first half of the day is probably 25-ish parents that come through um, during the week. Um, I'm not sure about the weekends because I'm not often over there, but it's, it's definitely a popular park with with parents with that are kids like five and under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grandparents. Yeah. Grandparents. So I saw a comment in the minutes about concerns about the public having cameras to uh, monitor what goes on in the mini park. Is that really a legitimate concern? I mean, we have to. Um, Why? I'm sorry, but it's it's strange, but I'm not not personally me, but there are parents out there who are adamant about <clears throat> not having children be on any. Cameras, just like, oh, cameras. Okay, okay, I think I understand where you're going with oh, that. Um, you know what? Okay, $4,000 every quarter? What, I mean, you know. Yeah, so I mean, we're looking at, I, I actually spent some time talking to some of the parents um, mm -hmm. that utilize the park. Um, and I actually had one mom actually pull over because she saw us out there to kind of tell us her experience. And, you know, we obviously don't know who's doing um, the damage to the playground, but we do know we have an issue with the middle school. Um, parents talking about kids after school coming there and just kind of jumping on the swings, not leaving. When the parents say, like, hey, this is, you know, it says right over this park is for, you know, five and under. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at enclosing the playground area with a fence, having more signage so the parents can just point, like, kids would actually have to come through a gate to get into the park. It would just be a couple extra steps for them does to make it a little less less hospitable for them 
Um, and other than that, just trying to work with the school and the principal. I mean, other than, you know, I, at this point, our best bet is having parents be the ones that are vigilant because we don't have a lot of eyes over there. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like a lot of this stuff isn't happening, you know, at midnight. You know, it might be happening right after school. When yeah. school gets out yeah. on your way home. Mm -hmm. That's just a shame. Um, you want to make a call us there? Comment to, to, to the playground of the school or about uh, two, uh, two years or so. Because uh, I, I have to tend to believe it's probably the same group of kids that keep kind of doing that, and eventually they'll be out of that particular school in a short way. But uh, yes, it is a shame. Absolutely. And I, it, it, it is amazingly expensive. Probably the same kids that used it when they were young. Probably. Anybody else? Yeah. David? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I guess I'm one of those parents I wouldn't want my kids filmed. And like, what's the point? Anyhow, if you're not going to enforce it, but it's just kind of ridiculous. But um, I'm wondering if you switch to a different type of playground equipment. I know this sounds a little funny, but it's something that I'm actually would love to see is instead of the standard playground equipment, that do like a natural playground, uh, something more sculptural, um, a different sort of playground where, you know, kids aren't going to be, you know, destroying the plastic and hopping up and down. It would be sturdy, it would be uh, pleasant to sit for parents, um, and I think it would upgrade the, the appearance of our community. I've given a lot of thought to that. One, the idea came to me actually when I was over at uh, Larksburg uh, Landing, where they've got that cool, huge piece of wood that, uh, with a hole cut through. It's very simple, but the kids love it, you know. And um, I mean, I would just love to see that in our community. I'd love to see that all around um, and replace some some of the you know standard equipment that we have. So, uh, I don't know, just a thought. And we could do it, we could maybe even get some grants if we make it wheelchair accessible as well. Is there one other question? Um, has the capital expenditure plan been updated? Um, Recently? Yeah, was it yeah. a month ago? We presented at the last PNR day. Okay. Oh. I was not there. No, you weren't there, but I think I uh, sent you a copy of it. Okay, no, it's probably in my new personal way. Uh, uh, I, okay, so there is a the the large degrees and everything else, yeah. including measure A. All that. Okay, yeah, very good to resend it. I'll, I'll take a look. It's probably buried in the folder. Yes, well, and it's also in the uh, you know, packet from last month. Okay. I just wanted to ask, I know that there's a sign that says the mini playground is for certain ages, and so some things that you might be talking about might not be appropriate for three-year-old children. Yeah, well, they, they, you can make them all different ages. But I just wondered, yeah. it's for little children, and therefore their parents would be with the little children. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so it's just the kids later on, they're going to walk in around. But I think they'd be yeah, less. Tell them, to tell them we'll the cameras on after dark. It, it's my recollection that we used to have much more woodsy, substantial playground gear, and because of safety requirements, we had to go to all this molded plastic stuff that is more <coughs> breakable, I guess. Yeah, and I, I actually just recently met with a um, playground distributor a few weeks ago, and I went around and we toured all three parks, three playgrounds, because at some point we're going to need to replace them. Um, he's actually, and this is just the beginning of the process, but he's going to start sending over some options as far as, you know, things like the more natural look, which some places are going back to with the wood features, um, which are now safe, I guess, um, or safe enough. <laughs> Um, so it's definitely something that I can't believe it's not good. Yeah. So the, our park and rec commission, um, I'm sure, is going to delve into that in the fairly near future. Okay. I, th I, th I, it would really make the community look nicer. I think. Okay. 
Have we exhausted that? In our commission list of findings from annual facilities board. Uh, yeah, this is just more information on a little disappointed that somebody from the PNR commission didn't make it down uh, uh, to go through it. And every year they do this, they go through the areas that are listed on the left hand side. Uh, uh, we give them a tour, they look for other kind of maintenance needs. This is uh, the list that they compiled and Shane and I kind of went through and tried our best to update some of the cost estimate, complete, the estimated completion date, status. A lot of these things are more ticky-tack. Some of these things are a little bit more, uh, when I say ticky, you know, they're minor little things that our staff goes through and does in a matter of minutes. Um, obviously, as well, um, Former chair of the PNR Commission, very familiar with this process. This is the uh, the list, so to speak, that they came up with. Shane does a good job working with the park guys and identifying some of these things that we can quickly kind of take care of in house and do and planning on when to do them and, and things like that. So uh, this is nothing more than uh, uh, informational sharing from the PNR Commission on uh, on their findings from their. Annual summer inspections. I think they run May, you know, every month May through uh, 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 June. Uh, not I mean May through October uh, or September. Yeah, October. I think we ended in here. Uh, I know Jeff was present for a few of these, at least uh, most of them. Uh, uh, and again, they're not. These are in a lot of times very smaller scale. Sometimes these tours turn into, you know these grand visioning things by some members of the, the, the commission that uh, isn't necessarily realistic per se uh, or wise, but it's, uh, I, I think that this list is fairly good and is something that A, keeps some things on the radar as well as uh, uh, allows uh, Shane opportunities for outside of the projects he's working on. Hey, let's knock a few of the things off of this list while we can. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, this is listed as the facilities inspection report, and I know there's been discussion over this last year on and off about taking care of the, the paths that run between the blocks uh, where some of the sidewalks have been displaced by tree roots and things like that. That is one area that we actually don't walk as the commission, or but I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I don't know if you have somewhere else to go with that. No, but, no, uh, but I will say a shame has. Well, and Shane can answer to some of this. Uh, we've actually brought out um, a company. Uh, uh, it was a budgeted expense at 7,500. They went through and looked at their. It's called Precision Concrete. They are. Uh, they They scale down. You know, raised sidewalks, trip hazards, things like that. They identified about fifteen thousand dollars worth of work. Um, Shane went through the list uh, as well as myself and said, "Okay, we have 7,500 of this." specifically budgeted this year for this project. Let's work with this company and say, these are our priority items that we want to get done right now for 7,500 and we'll address uh, the next round next year, ideally. Um, and a lot of those were within those walkways. Well, that, my comment leads into my next comment, and that is, in Lucas Valley Estates, there's at least two footbridges and there's a lot of asphalt concrete paths. I don't, because I haven't looked under them lately, I, I'm not aware of the issue of the condition of the two bridges, uh, but the paths are getting, their useful life is about worn out, and they're about 30 years old now. Yeah. So they've they, served you well. but They uh, served us well. Um, they need some work. And that is going to be an incredibly expensive amount of work because access is horrible. Getting the equipment down there, if they want to redo asphalt paths, is going to be... Uh, this is something actually that I know Tom Horn, my predecessor, spent a lot of time looking at, uh, especially that path that runs behind Creekside uh, along the creek there and kind of connects uh, Bridgegate to, uh, to Creekside Park. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be very hard to get, when those paths were done, the houses weren't built yet, and now you have very uh, narrow access and everything to get in there. I, I, I would say you, you look at some estimates on that, you'd have to also consider the option of potentially just turning that into a regular dirt path, like many of the other dirt paths are more of a gravel type base or something like that, other than re-asphalting it. Um, just my two cents, we, I don't know that we have any formal uh, proposals on it. I don't disagree with you. We have noted that on those paths. That particular path, actually, the crew does walk down. Um, and what we, uh, 
fondly referred to as the bridge to nowhere uh, that goes across the creek and just leads to a random spot a few steps away from Lucas Valley Road. Uh, That's just because you don't know the rationale of that bridge. Uh, I have no idea, to be quite honest with you, or of the rationale of that bridge. I'd be happy to tell you something. I, I, am, I am sure fixing it and replacing that bridge would also be a pretty expensive project, too. Um, the one bridge that Shane and I were actually looking at together not too long ago was the one that is along that path that goes mm -hmm. over the uh, uh, the water drainage way uh, that funnels into um, into the uh, uh, creek eventually. There's only one bridge, I know. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, well, there's two. Like well, the said, one that goes across yeah, the that, goes across Exactly, that secondary bridge. And we've obviously, and when you look at it, you can see that we've done some levels of uh, in-house repairs to it, trying to keep it fortified, getting rid of wood that looks like it's starting to rot out or whatever the case may be. Uh, Shane and I were actually just looking at that very bridge, I don't know, what, six, eight weeks ago? Yeah. Well, the, the access to the path is no different now than when it was built, uh, just for reference. But uh, it, I think it, it, it's something that needs to be kept in the list of things to do. Mm -hmm. Well done. Anybody? Linda? Oh, well, along those lines, I was wondering if any of the pedestrian lanes that I was talking about six months ago are going to be fixed. You know, the ones that are very uneven that are trip hazards. Right, so we're planning um, all the pedestrian pathways to get done next fiscal year, so Next is, okay, summertime. after the summer. Okay. Anybody, anybody else? Recreation and park maintenance activity report. Questions? Thank you. Any questions you answer for you? How was the uh, beer? Um, it was good. It was a good turnout. Um, I had a good time. The uh, state room who we forward that night was extremely happy. Um, it was a good night. Had enough people. Yeah, there were about 60 people. It was a good turnout for that. Yeah, you should have brought the whole pit crew in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, Just go out there and serve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anybody else? Uh, I, just, it, I have a question. Do, well, this is a park maintenance area. I know you got a bunch of vehicles back there. Is there a special project going on? Um, yeah, they just parked their cars there um, for tonight because they're doing work in the morning. But um, it's a tree company that's helping us get some dead trees out of the creek. Yeah. They'll, be, they'll be done by the end of the day tomorrow. Before the rain, I hope. Uh, during the rain, yeah. <laughs> uh, date of the next Park and Recreation meeting is November 28th. Request for future meeting agenda items. Isabella. So um, sometimes it's difficult to kind of take a step back and see what are really my key priorities right now, mine as in like districts, right? So obviously the now that we have um, the kitchen and the firehouse approved. Um, this is definitely a top priority. Let's complete it. Let's get it done and before the end of the year. Um, but also, I don't know what's the status of the um, the creek behind the pool house. Like I know that there was laps sent out and <coughs> inspection. So this and then the darn maintenance shed. These are um, my key projects that are like you know high on the priority list and if I may ask for this to be really priority and I'll have um, uh, maybe a timeline on each of the projects um, so we know whether we're on track uh, you know when can we expect the sheds to really you know be built and um, in terms of the especially the, the pool house area, we're looking at like millions of dollars of damage. So if, if that sort of collapse gives into the creek, right, we, we're in a big hole. So 
I don't know how we can expedite this or how we can. Uh, I can give you an update on the Creek Bank. I mean, uh, in next month's meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what so I would say in very short jest on that is the geotechs and people who know a lot more that look at it more closely than I do uh, don't feel that it is a high risk area at this point in time and feel that, that it'll probably be much simpler remediation measures than we felt. But I don't have the report yet. So uh, I have a guy coming out doing a top level survey, so I actually entered into a contract with this week, and he's gonna, he's going to do that. That's part of their stuff. Uh, and the phase one of their report from Miller Pacific will come up with uh, uh, also suggested, uh, for lack of a better term, repair options. Yeah. Uh, we've removed the old shed that was back there. It's completely gone. It's been brought down to dirt. Uh, we will certainly tarp that area off. Uh, did they get those gutters put up yet? Uh, no, we just We're going to run gutters up. along the back of the pool house building and be able to redirect more of the water that's going right. to go over there. But from a stability standpoint, uh, from a geotechnical, uh, again, I'm going to let the report speak for itself, but they, I, I will, I'm happy to say they were a little bit more reassuring. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so again, and, and also the shed that's, I don't know, now. Uh, so I'll, I'll be able to give you a more full update yeah, on that as well. well. I mean, everything that I discussed in the last meeting is still in process on that too. So it, it's moving about where I would expect it to be. But yeah, but I, I think we all know that we need to have it done in the spring. Like in the during the dry season, I'm saying not not in the next winter, right? Um, and another 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 request is um, like. Jeff mentioned he even has some of the data, like um, energy cost um, per month this year versus last year, you know, three months basically, right? Maybe we have the data for three months. Uh, I have the data from yeah. the inception of solar. Yeah, that would be perfect. And from a strictly cost perspective on we spent X last year, exactly. we're spending Y this year, there's yes. a little bit more that I'd still like to put into it, it's just something that uh, in all honesty I haven't had the time no, yeah, I to don't, be able but to put together. And, what and I'd also like to look at is uh, to really do an honest study, you need to look at total energy usage and then look at what were rates last year compared to rates this year. Uh, you know, our rates pre-solar compared to rates post-solar. Right now I'm looking at it strictly from a straight Cost, dollar yes, perspective yes, yeah. uh, and Jeff's numbers were right. I mean, it certainly is trending in from cash outlay, uh, much lower numbers. Uh, I don't know what that equates to. And the total savings, if you say if we were still 100% pg and &E, it'd be X rate, Y rate, Z rate, that uh, pretty complex analysis. Uh, and as time allows, I will do my best to uh, uh, start to try to put that together. I would be even happy with that. But in the meantime, I'm certainly tracking it the best I can. Yeah. Um, along the lines of the creek, I was wondering how FEMA is coming along. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an update on that next month, uh, okay. too. I, I've actually spent a lot of time working cool. with them and such, too, uh, in the last month. But again, I apologize. My district manager report was short. Uh, I have uh, uh, no worries. It's been a brutal couple of weeks from a health perspective for me. So. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to ask again about having a written policy for responses to public questions and requests when they're sent to the district. We don't have a current policy and sometimes responses never show up. Anybody else? Uh, no, I'm surprised FEMA wants to talk to us with all the, all the everything else that they have uh, uh, lined up. Are we we still have our we're still in queue? Uh, okay. Right after Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Well, luckily, as far as the queue goes, I mean, we're before that. So <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I, I grab what we can get. Let's go. But jeez, okay. That was a fear of mine. But, I mean, we have a designated person that, at point, and that has changed several times since the beginning of this, but uh, I've certainly done a lot of work and done a lot of submissions to them uh, over the 
course of the past month or so. Yeah, okay. Hopefully next month I'll have more concrete details I can show. Awesome. Recognitions of board members items of interest. Anybody? Then I would entertain a motion. So we'll do it All those in favor? Aye. 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 